Welcome back. Uh, during our discussion on deep drawing, uh, we are assuming axisymmetric shapes like this uh, or this or any other uh, similar uh, simple shape. Now, if the drawing ratio turns out to be greater than two or reduction turns out to be greater than 50%, then we may have to perform more than one drawing operations in order to make the shape. So if the shape change required by the part design is too severe, that is more than 50% reduction or drawing ratio of greater than two, complete forming of the part may require more than one drawing steps. So the second drawing step and any further drawing steps if needed are referred to as redrawing. So that is drawing the already drawn part. So that is redrawing. This is the simple illustration to understand what is meant by redrawing. So we have a shell that has already been drawn using drawing operation and we are drawing it again. So you could see the blank holder force as well as the drawing force in order to uh, draw this drawn cup again into a die that of course has a smaller diameter than and the starting diameter of the shell. So of course, this is, if you call it to be D1 and this diameter to be D2, then of course, D2 is smaller than D1. And the height that we will make after redrawing, if you call it H2, then of course, H2 will be greater than H1. So we are increasing the height of the shell by reducing its, uh, its diameter. So if we have a starting blank that has a certain diameter as we calculated in the previous segment, then in the first drawing operation, we make a shell that has a diameter say D1 and a height H1. So we draw it again to make a diameter D2 and height H2. Draw it again to make a diameter D3, H3 is the height and then draw it once again to make a diameter a D4 and height H4. So it is very clear that uh, D4 is smaller than D3, is smaller than D2, and that is smaller than D1, but it is just the opposite for height. So height four is greater than height three, is greater than height two, is greater than height one. So we are increasing the height by uh, reducing the diameter. And we will assume actually that there is negligible thinning that is taking place as we redraw an already drawn shell. So let's illustrate this uh, concept uh, using a simple example. So we have to draw a shell that has a diameter of three inches and a height of eight inches. What should be the diameter of the starting blank? Secondly, how many drawing operations would be necessary if there were no annealing operations intervening and assume reduction of 50, 40, 30, and 20% for each draw without annealing. So we can achieve a reduction of 50% uh, in first draw and a reduction of 40% in the second draw and so on. Also find the shell, uh, also find the height of the shell after each draw and check the last draw. So we have to make a simple shell that has a height of eight inches and a diameter of three inches. And in this case, we will assume that no thinning is taking place so, so that we can keep the calculations simple. So as we are assuming that no thinning will take place and there is no radius at the, uh, at the bottom of the shell, then we will use the simple formula for the diameter of the blank. So that will be equal to d square plus 4dh. <coughs> So the diameter is three and 
height is eight. So that will turn out to be approximately equal to 10.25 inches. Now, first we will see how much uh, uh, the diameter and height we can achieve after the first draw. So the maximum reduction allowed in, in first draw is 50% and we know the formula of uh, reduction. So that is equal to diameter of the blank minus diameter of the punch or we can say that the diameter of the shell after first uh, drawing operation and divided by the diameter of the blank. So that will be equal to uh, this is 50% or 0 0.50 diameter of the blank is 10.25. And let's see what is the diet that we can achieve after the first drawing operation divided by 10.25. So that turns out to be uh, that D1 after calculation turns out to be 5.125 inches. So that is the dia that we can achieve, the diameter of the shell that we can achieve after first drawing operation. Now the second question is how much will be the height of this shell? So as we discuss the basic rule that we will be using that area of the blank will be equal to area of the part that we are making. So we can use the same concept here that area of the blank will be equal to area of the shell after first row. Now, what is the area of the blank? As we are having a circular blank, so that will be equal to uh, pi by 4 d square and d here is the diameter of the blank. Now what will be the area of the shell after first draw? So we are making a simple shell, a circular shell that has walls and uh, has a base or a bottom. So that will be equal to area of the base of the shell after first draw plus area of the walls of the shell after first row. So the base is circular and uh, the walls, the cross section is as a whole a circular as well, that is a cylinder basically. So this will turn out to be pi by 4 into 10.25 squares. Now the diameter of the base is 5.125. So that is also a circle. So that will be pi by 4 into 5.125 squares. Now the area of the walls, uh, the cylindrical walls will be equal to pi d h. So we call it h1. So that will be equal to pi into 5.125 into h1. Now after solving this equation, the h1 turns out to be 3.844. So that is 3.844 inches. So the shell that we have made after first drawing operation has a diameter of 5.125 and a height of 3.844 inches. Now it is obvious that we are not able to make uh, the final shell in the first uh, drawing operation because the shell should have a height of 8 inches and a diameter of 
three inches. So we have to perform at least one more drawing operation in order to uh, make that desired shape. So let's see whether we can make the desired shape in second uh, draw or not. So uh, the formula for reduction is the starting dia minus final dia divided by starting diameter. So the reduction that we are allowed in the second drawing operation is 40%. The starting diameter uh, of the shell in this case, the first shell is 5.125. D2 is the dia that we are making and D1 is 5.125. So using this formula, the D2, that is the diameter of the second shell, turns out to be 3.075 inches. So that is slightly larger than the diameter that we have to achieve. That is a diameter of 3.00 inches. Now, what will be the area uh, of this uh, shell so that we can equate it to the area of the blank to find the height of the shell after second row? So we will use the same concept that area of the blank should be equal to area of the shell and that is area of the shell uh, after second row or let me call it shell two. So area of the blank was equal to pi by 4d square where d is the diameter of the blank and area of the shell will be equal to area of the base of the shell after second row plus area of the walls of the shell after second row. And again, we are having a shape like this. So area of the base plus area of the walls. So base and walls. So this one is pi by four into 10.25 squared. Now area of the base will be equal to pi by four into d square. So that is 3.075 squared plus area of the walls is pi d into h. Now h here is of course h2, that is height of the shell after second row. So by solving this equation, the h2 turns out to be 7.774 inches. So that is of course slightly less than uh, the required height of 8 inches. So we have to reduce this diameter further and increase this height further in order to make uh, the shell of the required dimension. So, so far we have, we have achieved a shape something like this. So a shell that has a height 7.774 and diameter of 3.075. Now, theoretically speaking, we have to perform another operation where slide deformation will take place and this diameter will slightly reduce to 3.00 and the height will slightly increase to 8.00. Now, in that third draw, practically how much reduction will be there. So let's see that. So of course we will use the same formula for reduction. So the starting diameter minus ending diameter divided by starting diameter. So in this case, the starting diameter is 3.075 minus 3.00 is the diameter that we have to achieve divided by starting diameter of 3.075. So that turns out to be a reduction of approximately 2.44%. So after uh, the third row, we should be able to achieve this diameter. So let's confirm it by uh, finding the height of the shell after uh, the third row. So we will use the same concept that area of the blank should be equal to area of the shell. After third row, so I call it shell three because we are having a zero process. So the area 
actually the volume and we are assuming no thinning so area should remain unchanged so area of the blank is equal to pi by 4 t square and area of the shell will be equal to area of the base of the shell plus area of the walls so that is pi d into h3 so again area of the base and area of the walls so here the h3 turns out to be approximately 8 inches and to be exact it turns out to be 8.005 because of the uh, round off so we have actually verified that uh, the height will be 8 inches after the third round now you should keep in mind uh, what we have actually done conceptually it is very important to understand that and the idea is that uh, in the first drawing operation, the diameter of the drawing die, so the diameter of the die should be this much. Sorry, the, the, the diameter of the punch. So the diameter of the punch, because this is the inner diameter of the shell that we are making after the first operation. So this should be equal to the diameter of the punch. And we can correspondingly calculate the diameter of the die and we will see that calculation in one of the following segments. And similarly, the diameter uh, of the punch for the second drawing operation should be equal to uh, this much, 3.075. And the final, diameter, the, the diameter of the uh, third punch should be equal to this much, 3.00 inches. Another important thing that you should keep in mind that in the second draw, on the left side, we took the area of the blank, but we could take actually uh, the area of the shell after first draw, and it would result in the same answer for the height of the shell after second draw because we are having a zero process we are not adding any material we are not removing any material and similarly here in the third drawing operation instead of area of the blank we could take actually the area of the shell after second draw and equate it to the area of the shell after third draw so this is the result that we we have achieved this is the summary actually of what we have done. So we had a starting blank that had a diameter of 10.25. So here the diameter, the starting diameter of the blank was 10.25. Then we made the first shell that had a diameter of 5.125 and a height of 3.25. 844, then the second shell had a diameter of 3.075 and a height of 7.774 and the third shell had a diameter of 3 and a height of 8. So this is uh, the starting blank, this is the first shell the second shell and this is the final product that we will be able to make. Thank you very much.